Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The business rescue of Everest Highfelt took a step forward this week with the naming of the winning bidder for the embattled steel producer. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what it means. Hi Terence. Hi Tracy. So can you take us through what is happening or what has been happening at South Africa's second largest steel producer in recent months? Well in April this year, um, the second largest producer, as you say, Highfelt Steel, Everest Highfelt Steel, went into business rescue. Um, and this is really coincides with a major downturn in the steel market. And I think uh, under investment in, uh, in the steel making production at uh, Everest Highfelt over a number of years. So these confluence of factors, this weak market, this lack of protection in the South African market, meant that the company fell into distress and uh, you know as a going concern there were major risks so we initially saw the industrial development corporation providing emergency finance in the form of 150 million uh, rand and business rescue pr practitioners being appointed and the business practi uh, rescue practitioners have been working over the last uh, few months on a business rescue plan which was published this week and part of that plan is a sale process and they were looking for bidders for this for this company. Now, this it's, it's a difficult thing because the company's in distress and is a curtail or has actually stopped operations. It has mining as well as steel making, as well as vanadium operations, and uh, it, it has had to stop them. It's got a lot of labour that uh, are on short time, and there's a process of engagement with labour around possible retrenchment or forced retrenchments there. And uh, so the, the, the business practitioner has been dealing with it. There's a lot of balls in the air, but the sales process was a key one, the injection of a new owner, fresh equity into the business, along with a few other pillars that they're looking for additional protection uh, from uh, the, in terms of tariff duties, as well as a, a commitment that we buy more local steel when we do government procurement. And the sale process uh, bidder was, is a Hong Kong-based company called International Resources Limited, very little known in the South African environment, but apparently does have a pre presence here and has some assets here. And uh, th they were named this week. And that th they also offered a turnaround strategy after a due diligence exercise that, is, as that they were a had access to following uh, they submitted a $10 million deposit refundable deposit which gave them access to the data that they needed to do the due diligence and that plan has now been published and it basically looks at how uh, what creditors can receive because uh, uh, the there's a number of creditors for both the Mapox mine and Everest Highfelt and about uh, 350 million for the Highfelt creditors and another 35 million for the Mapox creditors has been proposed and then it does also looks at the sale on the shareholder side what does it value the business at? And Highfelt was valued at around uh, 20, um, 20 million rand. Uh, and uh, Mapox, what, for what Highfelt didn't own, 5 million rand. Uh, and that's the offer that's now being going to be put before shareholders on the one side, but most importantly, the creditors. And that meeting will take place towards the end of this month. And what are the prospects of salvaging the business and saving jobs? Well, the business pr uh, rescue practitioners, as you'd imagine, are fairly optimistic at this stage. But I think there are a lot of moving parts here, and th we're not out of the woods yet. I think the sad bit is the 2,200 or so jobs uh, at the company, both at the mine and at the steel uh, facilities, are still under threat. There's still a Section 189 notice. There's still uh, an attempt to sort of... Um, uh, um, to downsize without going into a forced retrenchment process, but I think we'll probably find that we'll, there'll be some forced retrenchments, and th there's a talk of, uh, you know, uh, doing at least a th uh, or cutting at least a thousand jobs at the at the company. So I think that sadly that uh, the, the sort of too much water has flown under the bridge to salvage the jobs, but if the sales process goes he ahead, and we're talking about a process here, it's not a final deal. The offer still has to be voted on. Once that's voted on, there's, there's a lot of conditions precedent to this deal. There's a lot of environmental liabilities uh, that, uh, that face this uh, operation. And uh, part of that, uh, part of the deal is having to deal with those liabilities as well as there's a, there's a potentially huge tax assessment coming the way of Highfeld Steel, which could really dilute how much creditors get uh, out. So at the moment, uh, under the current tax uh, uh, regime, um, Highfelt uh, creditors will get between up to 29 cents 
in every rand owed to them. But if the tax assessment is, is quite uh, um, hostile, uh, that could really dilute it right down to f a far fewer cents for the creditors. So we're not out of the woods and the conditions precedent facing the buyer. I think there's a lot of issues that have to be dealt with there before the, the actual transaction, which I think the business rescue practitioners are hoping there should be a transaction in the early uh, parts of next year. And then um, the, uh, the, the, the sort of long stop date given is the middle of uh, t 2016. Uh, but hopefully we'll see some visibility sooner of the new owner and their strategy. And the, 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 uh, the International Resources Limited, the Hong Kong company, has given some insight into what are some of their thoughts around reviving the business, trying to get production going back to sort of pre previous levels, both at the mine as well as at the steel plant. And how does the business rescue fit into the broader developments in the sector? Well, we know that all the steel companies in South Africa are under major stress at the moment. We see initiatives that are a tripartite in nature. We've got government, business and labour working with all the steel producers. Highfelt's a special case in the sense that it's gone uh, into this desperate situation of business rescue. So there's been other measures that have had to be taken. But all the companies are looking for greater protection. And we've already seen the first steel, three steel products that had applied for protection last year. Those tariffs have now been uh, awarded back up to the 10% level uh, by, the, uh, by ITAC. But there's several other applications before, um, uh, before ITAC, uh, basically across the range of steel grades that are made in South Africa. And uh, there's been a promise of an expedited process, but these processes do take some time and they are sort of prescribed processes. So we're not seeing imme immediate measures, and that's why we're hearing a lot of unhappy voices, especially from, from Labour, saying, you know, we're doing too little too late. But there are these processes on the way. There is a realisation that we need to do more. And I think we're seeing from government that, uh, that they're very keen to sustain the primary steel sector. Now, that's, that was uh, a few months ago was, un was probably unclear because there's been a fairly hostile relationship between government and uh, the steel sector. I feel it's the government felt that its efforts in 2001 to salvage the steel sector, especially ArcelorMittal, um, weren't recompensed in any way in the form of developmental pricing. So there's always been this, uh, this hostile attitude towards uh, the, the steel industry on pricing. They charge an import parity price. But we see that they are all sitting around the table now looking at the pricing issue and uh, an offer has been made on a different pricing regime, looking at further protection and then also looking to try and bolster domestic demand for uh, locally produced steel in the form of uh, preferences in government's procurement program. So you, that it would be a designated product that uh, government uh, or state-owned enterprise would have to buy local steel if they were to buy new power lines, power stations, as well as uh, uh, locomotives or rail infrastructure. So that would be a, a, a help on the demand side. But we're sitting in a context of a world where there's a glut of steel. A lot of countries are facing similar issues in their steel industry. China has slowed down. Chinese production is looking for markets. And we're seeing that there's quite a lot of action by governments around the world uh, and uh, tariff setting boards to start raising uh, protection levels just to salvage their industries. And in other cases, we're seeing the closure of capacity. So it's a difficult time, and, but the high felt case is particularly difficult, and there's still some way to go there. Thanks, Terence. That is the second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.